In this video, I want to talk about our last analytic solution technique for first order differential equations, and that is uh, using substitutions to solve differential equations. Um, if you read the section in the book that covers this, the, it goes over a couple of different methods. I really only want to focus on one uh, particular method, and that's to deal with something called a Bernoulli equation. So we'll only look at one type. And that type is called a Bernoulli equation. OK, um, or Bernoulli's, I guess. Oops, Bernoulli's, there we go. Bernoulli's equation. Uh, <clears throat> So the idea of a Bernoulli equation, or Bernoulli's equation, is that we've got our derivative dy dx plus some p of x, y, this should look familiar, so far it's looking like a linear term, equals some f of x over here with one additional piece. On the right-hand side, we're going to multiply whatever function of x this is by y to the n, where in this case, n can be any real number. Um, we'll stick to ones for the most part where n is an integer, uh, but it can be any real number. So if we look at this equation and just ignore this last piece, this looks exactly like the linear equations that we dealt with uh, and solved using integrating factor. Um, and in fact, if we think of this n as being either zero, so we have y to the zero, which would just be one, then we get back the exact same linear equation we were looking back at before. Uh, and even if y is equal, or sorry, if n is equal to 1, um, it turns out that it can be a linear equation because I have a y to the first power here, a y to the first power here. I could just subtract this whole term over to the other side and do a combined coefficient that involves both the p of x and the f of x. So if n is equal to 0, or n equals 1, this is a linear equation. And when it's a linear equation, we'll be able to solve it using techniques that we've already dealt with. If it isn't, so if n is not equal to 0 or 1, then we'll use a substitution. And again, I don't think this substitution is necessarily intuitive until you see what it, the end result is. And the substitution is that we're going to use is we're going to write our equation in terms of a new variable u. And u is going to be y to the 1 minus n, where this n here matches this n here. So this is going to be the substitution that we'll use. Um, the impetus of, for this behind this technique uh, came a long time ago. Again, somebody that studied one of the Bernoullis, which is a big family of mathematicians, studied this type of equation for a long time, figured out that this substitution works. So I think it's going to be easiest to just do an example and we'll see exactly what happens. When we make this substitution, what ultimately results uh, is an equation that can be solved with our traditional uh, techniques that we've already looked at, and it basically takes it to a linear equation. So this substitution should yield a linear equation. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, I'm going to start it like this. So let's write it as x dy dx plus y equals x squared y squared. Okay, so looking at this equation, it does not look like the one that we have written here because I don't have a leading coefficient of 1. So the first step is to, again, make the leading coefficient in front of our dy dx term be 1. To do that, I need to divide through by x. So if I divide by x, what I'll get is 
dy dx equals, oops, sorry, not equals, plus 1 over x times y equals, now we divide this x squared on this side by x as well, and I'll wind up with just x times a y squared. And now this is in the form of a Bernoulli equation. Okay, um, one thing that I do want to mention is because we divided by x, this equation actually has some limitations that this one didn't have. So for example, x cannot be 0 because we're dividing by x. So all this does typically is put small restrictions on what the domain of the function can be. So just keep in mind, we're kind of looking out for points uh, where the function might be, the differential equation is undefined. In this case, it's undefined when x equals 0 because that is, uh, because we're dividing by x in this, in this case. Okay, so this is, again, zooming out so we can see the form here. This matches the form of a Bernoulli's equation. We've got our dy dx. We've got some function of x times y. Here's our some function of x times y. And on the other side of the equation, we have some function of x times y to some power, some function of x times y, in this case, to the second power. So for us, n is equal to 2. The substitution that we're going to make is that u is going to be y to the 1 minus n. In this case, that means 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so y inverse. u is equal to y inverse, y to the negative first power. So <clears throat> our goal is to now rewrite this equation entirely in terms of u instead of y. So rewrite the ODE in terms of u. And um, that means that we're going to want to basically come into this equation, and everywhere that y shows up, we're going to want to replace it with u. So we're going to need to basically do a little bit of algebra to fix things up. We have right now that u is equal to y inverse. What does that mean that y is equal to? Or So u equals 1 over y. Uh, if I take the reciprocals of both sides, we wind up getting that y is equal to 1 over u. So I'll need to go through in this equation and replace y with 1 over u everywhere that it shows up. But we also have this derivative term over here. So we're also going to need to figure out what dy dx is. Um, so this is one substitution that we'll make wherever y shows up. But now we need to also figure out how to replace dy dx. So let's look at that. dy dx, if we use chain rule and assume that y is now some function of u, as we've written it here, we could write this as uh, basically dy du du dx by chain rule. And this piece we can find by looking at our uh, representation of y that's sitting right here. So I can figure out dy du by taking the derivative of this. And then du dx will be the new derivative that shows up in our equation once we do all our substitutions that we'll be uh, using in our differential equation. So what is dy du? Well, this term is d du of y, which is 1 over u. So what's the derivative of 1 over u with respect to u? So basically u to the negative first power? Well, it's going to be negative 1 over u squared. You can get that by either just doing a power rule, treating this as u to the negative 1, the negative 1 will come down, and the power will decrease to negative 2. And we can rewrite that like this. You could also do quotient rule, but that's probably a little more work than you need to do here. So this whole thing winds up being uh, basically negative 1 over u squared times du dx. So this is our other substitution. This is what dy dx is equal to. So here are the two pieces that we're going to substitute in to the existing equation. And so with that in mind, our equation becomes 
the following. So the first thing I have is dy dx, this term here, but dy dx is negative one over u squared times du dx. So that's gonna be our first term, negative one over u squared, oops, u squared times du dx. Plus one over x, right? We aren't changing that part. Uh, all we're doing is replacing um, substituting u in place of y. We aren't doing anything to the functions of x. This is u is also still a function of x. So I have keep my one over x, and then that's times y. What was y equal to? One over u. And what's it equal to? Well, it's equal to x times y squared. So x times y squared. What is y squared? Well, if this is what y is, y squared is I just have to square that and get one over. Oops. 1 over u squared. So this is our equation in terms of u. Going back, right, these two things are the same equation. Here it is written in terms of y. Here it is written in terms of u, given this particular substitution. OK, so let's clean this one up a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> right off the bat, it doesn't necessarily look all that nice. But that's, again, largely because we have this big, ugly leading coefficient in front of our derivative term. So let's get rid of that. I want to get rid of the negative 1 over u squared. And to do that, I'm going to multiply the entire equation by a u squared and a negative 1, for that matter, to flip all the signs. So I'm going to multiply by negative u squared to get the leading coefficient to be 1. And I'm using this maybe leading coefficient as uh, sort of an abusive terminology. Basically, again, the coefficient of the derivative term. That's what I want to be 1. So I'm going to multiply by negative u squared every single term. When I multiply this term by negative u squared, uh, the negative signs will cancel and become positive, And I'll have a u squared on the top, u squared on the bottom. And we will get our desired coefficient of 1. So I'll wind up with just du dx. Uh, when I have, have my negative u squared term hit this piece, I'm just dividing by a u. So it was originally positive. This will turn it negative, so it'll be a minus sign. And I have u squared over u, essentially, uh, and a 1 over x. So 1 over x, u squared over u. And then for the last term, again, I multiplied by negative, sorry, here it is, negative u squared times this term. I still have the x there. The negative sign will make this whole thing negative. u squared in the numerator, u squared in the denominator. This thing is just a negative 1. And we can clean it all up. And we get that du dx minus 1 over x times u, right? That's what this simplifies to, equals negative x. And this is a linear uh, ODE, linear first order ODE in terms of u, right? This is the type of problem that we were able to solve uh, using integrating factor. And so we can do that here. Uh, in this case, let's just do integrating factor. Um, our integrating factor is going to be mu equals e to the integral of the p of x term. So whatever the coefficient is sitting in front of the u term. So the integral of negative 1 over x dx. And what is the integral of negative 1 over x? Well, what's the integral of 1 over x? We can just pull the negative sign out. Uh, the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x, or in this case, natural log of absolute value of x. So what we're going to get is e to the negative sign, natural log of the absolute value of x. That is what this integral is. But because we have e to the natural log uh, of this whole thing, you can think of this using our log rules. You could write this as e to the log of our absolute value, oops, absolute value of x to the negative 1. And the e and the natural log cancel. And we wind up with just basically 1 over the absolute value of x. Or uh, for the interval that we're going to care about, let's say we only care about solving this for positive values of x. So let's say maybe we're interested in the interval 0 to infinity. Uh, <clears throat> remember, 
we do have a restriction. We divided by x to get to this equation. So x equals 0 is off limits uh, as it is here. So let's say we're only interested in the positive values of x. We can just treat this as 1 over x. And why can I make this assumption? Well, I'm just making it up right now. I'm saying maybe what we're interested in is the model that we're concerned with. The only values of x that make sense are positive values of x to begin with. Right? There may be some context that tells us that we can relax this condition. So let me just make it easier for us. And let's just say uh, that for the original equation, we just wanted to solve this on the interval from 0 to infinity. So basically, positive values of x. OK, so this is our integrating factor. It's just 1 over x. If I multiply the entire equation by 1 over x, I should get something where the left-hand side appears to be the result of product rule. And so what I'm going to wind up is 1 over x times du dx minus 1 over x squared times u equals, again, multiplying every through uh, Multiplying every term through by 1 over x, we'll get negative x over x on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, this should be the result of taking the derivative of the product of our integrating factor, 1 over x, and uh, u, the unknown function that we're trying to solve for. So this should look like d dx of uh, 1 over x times u. And we can verify that in just a minute. And on the other side, we wind up with just negative 1 once we simplify this. So let's just verify that this derivative will give us what we've got right here, that it's the product of our integrating factor times u. Uh, so when we, take, we, when we take the derivative, it'll be first times the derivative of the second. Here's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, here's the second. And is this term here the derivative of 1 over x? Well, we already did that earlier. You can think of it as x to the negative 1 power. What's the derivative of x to the negative 1? The negative sign would come down as a coefficient, and the power would decrease from negative 1 to negative 2. And we would indeed get negative 1 over x squared. So it checks out. This matches this. And this side simplifies to this. So we simply need to integrate both sides with respect to x. And on the left-hand side, I'll simply get 1 over x times u. And on the right-hand side, our integral of negative 1 is simply going to be negative x plus some constant. Uh, to solve for u, I'll just need to multiply by x on both sides. and We will get that u is equal to negative x squared plus cx. And so this is what our u value looks like. We've solved the differential equation for u. We've solved this differential equation, or for that matter, this differential equation. But that's not what the original equation was. The original equation was a function of y. So we need to go back and plug in our substitution and solve for what the answer is in terms of y. All right. So let's write that down. But the original equation was in terms of y. So our answer should be as well. OK. So <clears throat> going back to our substitution, what is u equal to? Coming way back here, u is equal to 1 over y. So recall that u is equal to 1 over y. That means our answer is 1 over y equals negative x squared plus cx. And if we want to solve that for y, we can take the reciprocal of both sides and get 1 over negative x squared plus cx. And there is our answer. Uh, if we have an initial condition, we could plug that in to solve for what c is. But this is our answer. So just review real quickly, the whole process is recognizing the equation, right? So recognizing that it looks like one of the linear equations that we've done before. And the only thing making it nonlinear is that the right-hand side, this function over here of x, has a y raised to some power multiplying it. 
Uh, so here is what we got when we got the equation in that form, right? A dy dx plus some p of x times y equals some f of x times y to some power. This is a Bernoulli's equation. Our substitution will always be simply let u be equal to y to the power one minus whatever power is sitting here on top of the y. So u equals y in this case to the negative one power. Once you make that substitution and replace basically everywhere the y shows up in the equation as well as the dy dx using chain rule, you should have something that simplifies like we had down here to a linear differential equation. So we got rid of that one nonlinear piece and wind up with a linear differential equation. From there, we can solve it using the existing techniques of integrating factor. So basically, it just adds layers and layers on top of a problem that we already know how to do. And then at the very end, the only thing we need to remember is to make sure that we write our answer in terms of the original variable from the original problem. So you can't write it in terms of don't leave it in terms of u. U wasn't in the original problem. Write it back in terms of y again. Um, and notice this answer even has the same restrictions. Clearly, in this case, x cannot be 0. We had that restriction uh, pop up earlier in the problem. It even shows up in the solution. x equals 0 is clearly not a valid, um, a valid point in the domain of this answer right here. But otherwise, this is pretty simple. It won't show up a ton. Um, you'll get a couple of these to practice on. Uh, on the homework, but I'm not going to overkill this technique. Uh, and that pretty much completes every first order uh, differential equation technique that we know how, know how to do. Um, so other than basically getting lucky and guessing the right answer, these are all of the techniques we have to analytically solve first order differential equations.